I said I wasn't going to do it, but me and you, that's right, we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. What am I talking about? You may be asking yourself. I am talking about destroying a battery and looking at the insides. And it requires gloves because there's some really nasty solvents inside and I don't want to get them on me. Now, what did I say I wasn't going to do? I wasn't going to do it inside, but this is a really small battery and yeah, let's find out together. It's all concrete floor around here, so if I have a fire, I can push everything off onto the floor. We'll be all right. So, if you really want to dispose of a lithium battery, the first thing that you should actually do is make sure it's discharged. And these are not discharged. I am going against my own recommendations, so we're going to we're going to see what happens. But a thing of water if it's fully charged or you know if you don't have the ability to discharge it and then you need to add some salt this is just some salt for throwing out when it's you know wintry and wet and you need to get ice off of your steps it doesn't really matter what kind of salt it is it could be table salt it could be a potassium base it could be a sodium base it it just needs to be something that is conductive essentially it really doesn't take much there we go interesting thing about this particular salt is when it, get wet, it gets wet it gets really hot and so i've done this before mm, salty it's in the air now i've done this before to where i guess i put too much salt in and it actually started to get really hot like this will get really hot i forget which kind this is some some potassium base i do think instead of sodium because it's maybe slightly better for the environment i don't know we're still salt in the ground when it boils down to it so we've got some salt in there that's going to help us discharge one of these batteries i'd like to get the bubbles off the side if i can and now we're going to drop in this fully charged battery it's just one cell left the more cells the more bubbles you're going to get because a higher voltage it, it just works better but this is one cell let's see if we can get a little bit of bubbles off of it all right so these bubbles if we see them if we see them yeah i don't know if it's going to be a high enough voltage let's let's stir it up a little bit the bubbles are going to be hydrogen and oxygen which is flammable so be forewarned when you do this you should do it outside otherwise you will have a buildup of hydrogen gas and that could be potentially dangerous. All right, the bubbles that are forming are very, very, very tiny. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe you can see the bubbles forming on the edges here. Yeah, there we go. She's discharging. Ugh. Oh yeah, I got the salt mixed in now. It is discharging a little faster. You can probably see, hopefully you can see the stream of bubbles coming off of one of those tabs. This is also called electrolysis, breaking water apart into hydrogen and oxygen. All right, enough of that science experiment. We're gonna set this off to the side. Next up, we have the other cell that was left of this two cell pack. I don't remember what this was. It's like a 1300 milliamp hour two cell or something like that. Look at the last video where we take it apart. That'll tell you what it is. And it is fully charged right now, which means that it is kind of inherently dangerous. And there is a chance that if I accidentally get my anode and my cathode touching, that it could spark and then catch on fire. But yeah, yeah, concrete floor. I'll just kind of push it that way, hopefully, and we'll be good. So I hope. All right, this thing is puffy. It is still holding juice for sure and really it's just a foil pack so we can just kind of like tear it open it's probably not going to smell great i could also get some scissors out i think i have some scissors in here that, that that'll help mm -hmm. there we go some scissors and i'm actually going to grab a little something to put down just in case Probably not the best idea to add a flammable piece to the tabletop while I'm doing this, but we're going to take our surgical instrument and we are going to carefully remove the skin from our patient. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll go on the edge first and we'll see. Does it open? How far did the foil seal go? Mm hmm. Oh, now she's open. I can feel the gas getting out. There we go. 
using a conductive tool here, which is not a good idea opening up batteries. None of this is a good idea. Just generally opening up a battery is not a good idea. There we go. So we've got a little, ugh, ugh. the solvent inside. It, it's sweet and it smells terrible. It's an organic solvent. Yuck. This stuff is nasty. Kind of smells like like a paint house or whatever, like an automotive paint center. All right, there we go. We're getting somewhere. All right, I can see that they have insulators around the outside, so I'm gonna cut a little deeper and I don't have to worry quite as much. There we are. Yuck. Ugh. Hmm. I'm gonna just tell you how ugh, nasty this smells. Right, I guess I'll cut up this side. There we go. So now we're getting into the internals of the pack. It almost just looks like another battery inside of a battery. And I'm gonna cut these tabs off, being very careful not to short out left and right, because if we get a little spark, the solvent that I'm currently smelling that smells terrible Gonna catch on fire. It's a very flammable solvent. Now, of course, since I don't have my fingernails available, this is gonna be a little more difficult. Just a little insulator on the outside. And now you're starting to see the actual meat and potatoes of the pack. What else could it be besides meat and potatoes? <laughs> the internal organs. Mmm. Separating. There's layers. So each brand of pack is going to be constructed in slightly different ways, right? So this one is actually an accordion in a different direction than I was expecting. I've taken them apart where it's more like a jelly roll. And this one isn't so much jelly roll as it is like an accordion. There we go. Now I'm wondering, aha, yes, we can take this off. Good, perfect, perfect, perfect. Mm hmm So now what we're gonna start seeing is the layers. This is, let's see, copper, it's got a copper tab, so I forget anode or cathode, it doesn't really matter. And it's coated in what's called carbon black. And you probably can't see, but I'm actively watching the solvent just off-gassing right now. And then we have a separator layer in between, and then we're gonna have another tab. It's covered in carbon black. And this second tab is connected to the other side of the battery. So it just goes back and forth. If we, if I connect these together, it might actually spark. So I'm just going to be careful. I'm going to rip off the one side. Very thin, very thin. So this stack here, we have, you know, one and the other. That is actually a complete cell. 
we've got essentially an aluminum side or a nickel side and then we have a copper side with our stuff in between and that creates the entire battery but you won't have much run time if you only have two of these little plates next to each other so what they do is all of these are actually in parallel with each other so here we go another copper and we take the separator and then we have the other aluminum side or nickel i, I forget what it's made of it's connected to the aluminum terminal there we go we're gonna pull the aluminum one off another layer another copper whoop <laughs> got a little short there so uh it's super dangerous for me to be doing this <laughs> really don't want it to catch fire in my hands so i'm actually just going to stop here but as you can see it's just layer after layer after layer just over and over and over we have these back and forth with the separator and then we have that that uh, really smelly vaporous stuff in between and that's a that's a battery they're pretty much all constructed the same although you can move the directions that you're making the layers in you can do it in big wraps you can do it in this accordion style back and forth but it's just a lot of parallel plates on one side as an anode and a whole bunch of parallel plates on the other side as a cathode and that's how you get your runtime your milliamp hour or your amp hour goes up and up and up every time you add more plates in parallel and this like i said just one of these pairs is a full battery and it's going to give you that fully charged 4.2 volts being a lithium but just two plates like that wouldn't be much runtime it would be interesting to count and see how many plates they have for 1800 milliamp hours let's just let's do that together yeah, yeah, yeah. Make your guesses down below. How many plates do you think it took for them to make a... Oh, no, I'm sorry. This was a 1,300 milliamp hour pack. How many plates do you think it took to get to the center of this? All right. I will That's lay... Half the 1,300. Uh, yes, as far as voltage. It would still be 1,300 milliamp hours at 4.2 volts, or if you add two cells, then it's 7.4 volts. So adding the main cells together... That's how you get your voltage, but these little plates inside, that's how you get your runtime, these little parallel plates. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue on. I'll be very careful. So three, and this is the fourth copper. Oh yeah, I gotta be, woo, sparks. Gotta be real careful. Not a good plan, this was not a good plan. All right, you know what I can actually do is I can, <laughs> I can just, look sideways and we're going to count the folds so we're up to four right now five don't want to touch anything with this five there we go and then six And then seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. It looks like twenty layers. So on average, let's see, if it was 1300 milliamp hours and it was 10 layers, and that'd be 130 milliamp hours per layer, it's 20 layers, so it's gonna be half of that, about 75 milliamp hours for each pair of anode and cathode. Interesting. All right, well, I'm gonna just dip this in here, and uh, there we go. Oh boy, <laughs> she's, uh, she's bubbling now. All those layers are, of course, open and uh, ready to discharge instead of just having two little sections. So I'm going to call it good. I'm going to walk this outside really quick. If you have any questions about batteries and what not to do like this, then there you go. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. <laughs>
We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.